Okay, welcome back. Uh, last week we did the first project, which was the line drawing of our face. And um, let's see, that one is in here somewhere. Here we go. And it looks something like this. We had a white background with a uh, bunch of dark lines here, right, to delineate different areas of value. So I would recommend just using this JPEG that you saved out for the next project here. So what we're going to do is go in and open GIMP. And uh, the purpose of this assignment is to take your areas of value that you drew outlines around and fill those in with color. So basically you're making a color portrait now of your line drawing. That's essentially our, our goal in this week's assignment. Okay, so right here, once we get here we're going to set up our uh, dimensions here i'm going to start gimp open twice oh, straight here. okay so this in this particular assignment your image dimensions are going to be um, 540 by 720 so let's do a new file control plus n and for our width we're going to put in 540 is that right yeah and then our height's going to be 720 so it's going to be um, taller than it is wide, right? 540 by 720. Click OK. You can see there it kind of looks like the shape of our uh, previous assignment. So the next thing I would probably do is bring in my portrait, my line drawing portrait that I did. And let's go to here. And here it is. And you can just grab this file. Drag it into the canvas and let go of the mouse button. And notice there it comes in. Now notice there, if you remember the previous assignment, our dimensions were different. They were 480 by 640. And today's assignment is 540 by 720. So we have to increase the size of this image here, right? There's a couple ways you can do it. I would probably just grab the um, scale tool right here. Uh, and again, make sure you're on the correct layer, which is the picture or the JPEG and just click on that once and notice here you have some dimensions that pop up. So here you could just type in 540 by 720 and notice there the dimensions keep changing, not letting me. So again, to get rid of this aspect ratio consistency, just uncheck the uh, chain here. So once you break that chain, now you can have free freedom to put whatever numbers you want in here. So 540 by 720. Okay. And then hit scale. Okay, now I can just grab the move tool up here in the toolbar. It looks like a cross there. And just move this into position. Until it covers up all the canvas, right? So perfect. All right. Um, so that should do that. So once that's in place, um, now what we can do is start putting some colors in here. Um, another option might be to uh, colorize the background too. So step one would probably just to be figure out, you know, what you want to start with. Maybe I'll start here with the skin tone here. Um, so what we're going to do is grab the fuzzy select tool, and it looks like the ma a magic wand tool with a star on the end. We're going to click that, and we're just going to select an area. Okay, in this case, we're just selecting this forehead part. Let me zoom in just to show you. You can see there that it's selected. There's some marching ants there. And, uh, I don't know, maybe grab a couple more. If you hold down shift, push shift down and hold it down on your keyboard, Click in a few other areas, and you should be able to hear. I'm on, I'm on the Zoom tool. Um, let's go back and grab the Fuzzy Select tool. Hold down Shift, and you can select some other areas. Notice there I selected all the, this area down in here, too. And I did that just by holding Shift. And let's say I want to do that here, and maybe here. Okay, so now that these are all selected, I can grab my uh, foreground color here, click on it, and find a good skin tone. Uh, 
let's see, maybe a little more red in there. That's looking kind of good for this, for my purpose here. That looks pretty good. So click OK. Then I'll grab my paint can and I'll just go in there and click. And notice there, once they were all selected, they all filled in at once. So that's kind of cool. Um, um, so that's kind of a neat way to do that. And then let's go ahead and put in some different colors in other places. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, deselect all this by hitting the shortcut is Control Shift A, or you can also go up to Select here and choose None. Control Shift A. Now all that's deselected. And um, let's see. Let's start. Let's do maybe some of the hair here. So let me grab again. Grab my fuzzy select tool. Select an area in here. And let's go ahead and do that. And then maybe some of these areas over here in the eyebrows might be a good idea. And of course, the uh, mustache and beard part here, which is good. That's all selected here. And then maybe this one down here. And let's uh, let's choose a slight. Let's go a little darker there. Something like that. Let's try that and grab the paint can and fill that in. Okay, and that looks all right, but I, I kind of want to maybe try a different, slightly different shade with a little more brown in there. That might be better. Let's try that. Okay, I like that better. So that's the basic idea here is to select certain areas using the fuzzy select tool. And then filling that in with the... Uh, paint can and also changing your foreground color when you need to okay okay so one thing you notice too is you might have closed off some areas that you want to color a similar color so my recommendation would be to grab the uh, magnifying glass and go in and magnify this up a little bit so you can see yeah, right here, like up here at the top, in the eyebrow area. I wanted to maybe have this all go all the way around brown. So you can zoom in. Like I said, you can zoom in really, really far if you want. And then grab the fuzzy select and then just go into those areas that you didn't get. And just hold down shift maybe. Like that. Okay, and that little tiny gray area right there. And then what you do then is just fill that in again with the paint can. Those are all selected. And notice there you're getting that area. And again, do the same thing right here. And some of these other areas. You may have to go in even too and do some of it manually, which I'll do it at the end, do some of the final touches. But like that, you may have to go in, like I said, and, and fill it in a little more. So, you know, maybe right here, for example, let's go to the fuzzy select, grab this area. Hold down shift and select other areas that need to be filled in. This whole part right here, up here. Uh, that's probably good right there. And then we'll use another color for the rest of that. Um, so just keep that in mind. You may need to go in and uh, select certain areas that it didn't get, I guess. Okay, so magnifying glass. Let's go ahead and hit control and zoom out. All right, and then just to deselect, Control Shift A, and uh, let's see what can we tackle next. Let's maybe do the glasses, so the glass frame maybe, and the and the uh, yeah, let's do the glass frame maybe kind of like a blackish color. So let me grab. If I, I can just if I want to flip the background color here to the active foreground, just click these two little arrows right here. And notice there now I have black in the foreground. So I'm going to click here, select some areas of the glasses. Uh, let's do the outside here. Outsides, I mean. OK, 
okay and then we'll get maybe this area this area and these parts here of the glasses okay, let's try that okay grab the paint can again and just click in an active area and notice there it'll select all of them um, and so that's kind of the basic idea that we're talking about here. We're just doing some basic uh, color, uh, filling in with colors. Uh, let's try on this one. Let's try some a different color here. Maybe maybe some kind of a bluish tint, maybe or gray. Um, let's try a, a bluish tint. That might be a kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and grab this, and we'll go in here, maybe a dark blue, and let's fill that in, see what it looks like. It's kind of interesting. Shift Control A. And so you can see I'm off and running here, trying to get all these areas filled in. Um, See up here in the eyebrows, I'm, I'm getting some gray hair, but I probably don't want to go there quite yet <laughs> with this. So we'll see. Let me zoom out here. Oops. Zoom back in here. Um, so let's go with that. We'll do. Uh, oh, let's do maybe a little darker brown. So we'll go in here switch this to the foreground color but let's let's knock that down a little bit grab our paint can or grab our uh, fuzzy select tool select the, some of those other areas of the eyebrows we'll fill those in with a darker color grab my paint can and yeah i can live with that <laughs> <coughs> so i don't look too old yet so Hold down shift and select those other areas and fill that in and so you can see it's kind of a tedious process but this is the process i want you to follow for doing this now i can switch colors by grabbing my color picker tool right here it looks like an eyedropper click an area on the canvas and notice that becomes my foreground color here and then grab my uh, fuzzy select i'm going to select right under the eyebrow and fill that in with that kind of fleshy color I started with. There we go. And again, I can zoom in. You can see an area that I missed right there. So I'm going to grab that area and see if I can fill that all in. There we go. Shift Control A to deselect. and uh, let's see what else can we do uh, let's do the this part of the glasses maybe oh i guess we can keep that black let's do that so i'm going to grab the uh click the boxes here to set my uh if you click these two little boxes underneath your active foreground and backgrounds that'll switch them back to black and white your default colors um and let's do Yeah, we're going to do black there. So grab my fuzzy select, grab both of these areas, and we're going to fill that in with black. There we go. And uh, let's do some gray areas inside the glasses here, too. So I'll select this area and this one. Maybe these two down here. And let's fill maybe this one. And this one here and we'll fill that in with like a grayish color let's go up to white bring that down something like that maybe okay that looks pretty good all right so the eyes are starting to take shape in the eyebrows here um, there's a couple more areas in the eyebrows i can fill in so let's go here Again, fuzzy select tool. So it's very tedious doing it this way, but I want you to get used to this idea of using your color tools here 
and just being uh, and being aware of them and how to use them. <clears throat> and we'll select that dark brown area again. <clears throat> Let's grab the paint can. We'll fill that in. There we go. That's looking better. <clears throat> so we're moving right along here. <clears throat> so I'm going to keep going here and fill in a little bit more, and then I'll come back and we'll do some final touches. Okay, I just wanted to come back and show you make, I'm making some progress here. And I decided to kind of go for more of a monochromatic effect. So I'm limiting myself to just a few shades of blue and, and brown. So some cooler and warmer colors. Um, one thing I do want to show you, though, is you may want to zoom in and close off some areas that you need to at some point. Um, let's zoom in here. And let me show you something here that happened. I was trying to fill this in, this area here on my neck, a darker shade, maybe this brown. So I went over and grabbed the color picker and selected the brown. So one thing that I noticed is here, I tried to, when I went to fill that in, I went to select it. So I grabbed my fuzzy select tool and uh, selected it. And then I went to fill it in. And I noticed there that it filled in some other areas that I did not want brown there. And that means that this isn't sealed off correctly, right, in this little area. So... Control Z will undo it, um, and Shift Control A to deselect. And I noticed here if I zoom in up here, that this line could be just joined to this other line to seal it. So I decided to just grab, I'm just going to grab my, um, well, here, let me grab, well, let's just go, let's just put black in the foreground, and I'll grab my brush tool. And again, if I go over to my tool presets in the upper right, I can bring that size back down to one. I think that's what we used in the assignment. And I can just join those lines now. Make sure you're on the right layer. Of course I am here. And I'm just going to join this with black here. And notice there how much darker it is in this one. So what I could do is match that. I could go up to my fuzzy select and just grab a color pixel of that line there. And I guess it's detecting black there also. Um, and then what I can do to match it a little bit is go to my tool presets here. Uh, oh yeah, I gotta grab my brush first. Uh, maybe just turn down the hardness and the force to make it a little bit lighter. Let's see here. Let's let's, uh, let's see. Size is one. I don't know why those aren't coming in there. Let's see. Maybe I'm on the wrong layer again. Oh, no, I am. Okay. Uh, not sure why it's not writing in there. So let's see what's going on here. Sometimes this happens when I'm also screencasting. It's like my computer can't do two things at once. Um, so bear with me here a second. Yeah, let's reselect that. And hardness is at 100. So we're gonna leave, we'll bring those up again. See if I get something here. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's not drawing there. But what I want to do is join these lines here. So I'm gonna have to uh, let's see. Figure something else out here. Um, one thing I could try is I can select. I can grab my marquee selection tool. Or here's my rectangular select. I can select an area that I want to copy. And I can move this around too. Probably just want that straight line. So let me do a smaller box here. Or let me deselect shift control A. Do a small box like that. Then I can move this box. Watch this. This is cool. And then if I hit, I think it's shift and alt. I can drag that piece double click on it and look at duplicated it so maybe I can join this up here do the same thing here I'm gonna draw a little box around that piece hold down shift and alt and then left click the mouse and drag the selection and what it does is it duplicates it shift control a to deselect it and shift control a again to deselect or double click off of it and see notice there I brought the line up because my pen tool wasn't working. And I again, that happens when I'm also screencasting live. I don't know why, uh, but GIP is infamous for doing that. 
So I think that'll be enough. Now that these are joined, watch what happens now when I select that area. So I'll grab my uh, fuzzy select tool. And it looks like it just selected the area I want. So that's good. Oh, and I also have to change this back to brown. So I have to grab the color picker, click in the brown area, and then grab my paint can. And notice there, it did uh, just color this area without coloring some of this fleshiness on the top. And that's exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, so that's something you want to think about is where can you um, close the gaps on some of the areas that you want to be enclosed and isolated from the rest of your tones in your uh, portrait. All right, so I'm getting closer to being finished. So the, one, one of the finishing touches you might want to do is, is zoom in and, and fill in any areas that you might have missed. For example, right here around the mouth here. I missed that little area, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in extremely, grab that area, and then what you do is, again, select the color you want, grab your paint can, and you just fill it in like that. Shift Control A to undo it, or to um, deselect, sorry. Okay, here's another area right here where I missed the brown, so I'm going to grab the fuzzy select tool, grab that, grab the paint can, fill that in. So there's probably some areas that ended up getting closed off that you didn't want to be closed off. So you have to go in and kind of manually do it. Now here on the shirt, there's a little dark blue I need to fill in right here. So again, I'm going to grab the color picker tool and grab my paint can. Oh, first I need to select it right with my fuzzy select. Now grab my paint can and fill that in. So that's probably the first finishing thing I do is I look for areas that didn't get filled in and just zoom in extremely so I can fill them in. Here on the face too there are a couple of pieces here. In fact I want to take these and make these lighter too. These don't need to be so dark. I don't even like these spots there. It makes me look like I have acne or something. I haven't had acne for a while. <laughs> All right so anyway um so I'm going to just make those all light blue, like the one up here on the forehead up top there, right here. Uh, so those are all selected in this area now. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my color picker, click on the light blue areas to change the color, grab my paint can, and voila, those are done. Um, and then probably the last thing I would do before I... Uh, decide that I'm done is look at areas that need to be changed. Like there's some darker areas around there. Not too big of a deal, but I could also grab my um, brush tool. Well, here, let's zoom in first. Grab my brush tool right here and then just go ahead and just kind of fill in those dark pixels with lighter ones just so they don't stand out as much. And I'm only concerning myself with the real dark ones and maybe even some of the lighter ones too. That looks pretty good there. You know, just kind of clean it up a little bit. Nothing too drastic. Um, and let me zoom out here. You can see like a few areas on the ear that I'd want to fix. So again, I could grab my uh, fuzzy select tool here. You know, hold down shift and select all the areas that I want to change. Maybe right there and then grab my paint can. See, and you can kind of clean things up that way. Um, here's another place right here that I might want to grab and make all dark. Uh, dark blue. So again, click on the dark blue area, then grab your paint can. And so I would spend a little time just cleaning things up by zooming in, filling things in that didn't get filled in, and maybe even using the pen tool to clean your, uh, to, to clean your work up. For example, here's another area that needs a little work. So again, I'll grab my color picker, grab that, select the area that I want to fill in, or areas. Here's another area right here. While I'm holding, oh, I didn't need to do that. I need to be holding shift and then just click in the areas that I want to change the color of. Grab my paint can. And that's done. So, you know, that kind of thing helps you uh, clean things up, make it a little bit more solid when you turn it in. 
Just grab those areas that you want to change. Grab your paint can and just click in that selected area. And voila, you get to change it up a little bit. Right here, here's another area. Um, so don't be afraid to zoom in extremely and clean it up just a little bit, either with the pen tool or the um, paint can. Okay, so once you feel like you've gotten it cleaned up the way you want, then the last step might be to consider what, what color background do you want. Um, white here looks okay, but it doesn't really do anything for it. So I want to put something behind it that really brings out my image more. Um, so the first thing I noticed here is when I closed off my portrait down below, you can see there's a white border down below where my torso is. I want to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is um, I think I'm just going to crop it and see if that works and then just resize it. So if I grab my crop tool, I'm just going to draw an area that I want to keep. Maybe about right there. About right there, maybe. Hit enter. And notice there I got rid of it by cropping it. But now my portrait is a little bit smaller. You can see the border where I cut off some of the area. Um, but no problem. I can, I can resize the image again. If I click on this uh, scale tool, click on the image itself, and um, just change, again, change my dimensions back to 540 by 720. Click scale, and now I'm back in business, right? Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. 540 by 720. Click scale, and now my image fits right in there, so I'm good to go there. Okay, so that took care of it, and now I've so I've cropped it, but I've also got rid of that bottom border that I didn't want. So the last thing I might do is think about what kind of background do I want. I don't like white here. Since this is all part of the same layer, I can just select the white area with my fuzzy select tool now. Um, if you go to your tool presets, too, you can just make sure that... Uh, if you keep your threshold low, it won't select any white inside the... If you turn up the threshold, it may select... No, I guess it won't. Not with the Fuzzy Select tool. So Fuzzy Select will only select an enclosed area, I believe. Let me zoom in here. And, uh, yeah, if you turn up the threshold, it'll select just about everything. Let me show you what I mean. Um, if I grab the fuzzy select, click on this, my threshold's 200%. And then when I go to fill in the color, notice it colors everything in. So you want to keep the threshold low here. When you select your fuzzy select tool, bring the threshold down. I would keep it as low. I'd probably keep it down to 1 to 5, something like that. Then just select that area um, with the fuzzy select tool. And notice there, it's just getting the white area on the outside. It looks like I missed a little bit down there. So bring up the threshold a little bit if you're not getting everything. Try it again there. Now it grabbed everything. So the lar the more you turn up the threshold in under your tool presets over on the right here, the more of different shades and colors it'll select. So you may want to keep that threshold low if you're just trying to get a certain area. And let's try let's try a color here. Let's try uh, let's try a, a red maybe something like that. No, maybe a, something a little more in the blue or green range. Let's try that kind of greenish color. Grab my paint can and turn that fill that in. That doesn't look too bad. Um, so yeah, if I want to continue with the monochromatic look. I probably want to keep it within the blue, green, or the browns and yellow family. Let me try that. So I'm, I'm moving it more toward the blues scale. Blue scale there. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, that looks not bad at all, actually. Uh, maybe try one more. Let's go a little darker. Here, if I want to darken it, I can just bring this down a little ways. Click OK. Something like that. Um, and let's try one more. Let's try black just for giggles here. Um, black doesn't look bad either. Um, so something like that.
like that. I think I'm going to go back to the blue, so I'm going to hit Control Z. Go back to the blue one more time. And again, I'm going to darken it just a hair. Maybe more of like that color, that shade. Yeah, maybe a little darker even. I'm liking that though. Okay, and there we go. So now I've kept that monochromatic look, sticking with the blues and the browns here. I wasn't following any particular color scheme. Um, and actually looking at it from a distance, I don't like it as much. <laughs> so maybe I do want to go lighter. Um, let's try that again. So again, looking at it from uh, different perspectives helps too. Almost blends in too much, huh? So let's try... Let's go for more of a violet tinge on the back there. Let's try that violet a little bit more. Click OK, grab my paint can. Yeah, almost like black the best, I hate to say it. <coughs> so if you uh, find a color you like, just stick with that. I think that's going to do it right there for me. So shift Control a to deselect it. Once you have your background filled in and your image cleaned up, the final step is to export it out as a JPEG. So you're going to go to File, Export or Export As. And notice here it says a PNG up here. You can change it down. If you go to the bottom here of this window where it says Select File Type by Extension, click the plus sign and then roll your mouse, middle mouse button down to find JPEG. There it is. And notice here up on the top now, JPEG has been added to it. And you're just going to name this 2 dash your last name. In my case, I'm going to put Acker, but you're going to put your last name. Make sure JPEG is your extension there. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it right back into my number two folder. Click export. A file named JPEG, jacker.jpg already exists. Would replace it? Yeah, I'll just replace it. Now you get this quality slider. I'd bump that up to 100%. And then just click export. And now I should be able to... Now let's save this first in case I need it again. But now I should be able to go into my folder. And this would be the file that I would upload into Canvas here. Here it is right here. 2 dot or 2 dash acker.jpg. And that's the file that you would upload into the Canvas module here is your JPEG file. And then you're finished.